Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is a Dodger fan uh, coming to you live from Tracy, California. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do a YouTube channel is because I've noticed that a lot of YouTubers that talk about sports cards are either in the Midwest uh, or maybe on the East Coast. Um, and even the ones that are here in Southern California don't seem to be California fans. So I, I want to say that I'm the first Dodger fan to to do a uh, YouTube channel on sports cards. So anyway, what brought me back to the hobby and what brought me to YouTube to do a sports cards uh, channel? Well, I read an article on ESPN that uh, a Mike Trout rookie card sold for nearly $4 million. Uh, this was back in August of last year. After I read this article, I was like, what? how, which card was this? How did it sell for so much money? Uh, who bought it? Uh, I had all these questions, but I was just very intrigued because I considered myself pretty knowledgeable about the sports card industry. And, and to my knowledge, uh, it was pretty much dead. <laughs> uh, there were some cards that were worth money, but uh, not a whole lot and nothing any, anywhere close to $4 million for, for a modern card. Uh, I know that um, the Honus Wagner uh, was probably worth over a million dollars at one point in back when I was a kid, um, or maybe some other more vintage cards could uh, carry that price tag. But uh, this really blew my mind that uh, a modern card would sell for so much money. So uh, once I discovered what it was, that it was his Bowman Chrome uh, one of one serial number one of one. I was even more intrigued uh, as I had quite a bit of Bowman Chrome baseball cards uh, in a shed that had just been kind of sitting there for about a decade. Um, my parents threatened to throw them away from time to time over the years. So I, I really honestly believe these cards were worth uh, next to nothing. And probably at some point I would go through them and maybe give them away. Uh, and, and to be honest, I couldn't give them away. I tried to give my cards away to to um, maybe if I had a friend who had a son, uh, anybody that I thought of that was into sports, uh, you know, maybe their kid was into sports and they might just wanna have this collection of cards to start off their collection, no interest whatsoever. So I, I truly thought that uh, I'm just gonna have a hard time getting rid of these cards. So as I started to rummage through, I started to realize that there were some gems in there. Um, <clears throat> I looked on eBay at the market price and I found a card that was worth $40 and I said, oh, wow, you know, I remember paying 25 cents for that card uh, back in 2013 and it's actually worth money now. I, I can't believe it. If that card's worth money, other cards have to be worth money. And sure enough, uh, I started going through my collection and, and finding Tom Brady's, Kevin Durant's, uh, Kobe Bryant's. And uh, these cards were worth money. Uh, luckily, I kept my cards in very good condition. Uh, kept them in sleeves and top loaders and team bags. So um, I really lucked out there. I, I, I did know enough to know that if these cards were ever worth money, the condition of the card is really going to matter. So that's kind of what brought me back to the hobby. Um, that's what uh, how I'm here today doing a YouTube channel and... Uh, I want to talk about what the state of the hobby is today. Uh, many of you may not know that there are people who actually invest in sports cards, similar to investing in alternative assets such as gold or fine art. Uh, some people even invest in sports cards the way they would invest in stocks. Uh, they'll put together a portfolio. Um, they'll track it on the spreadsheet. They'll track it in a program. Uh, they track the value of their cards on a daily basis based on eBay sales. So it's actually pretty sophisticated. Uh, I never would have guessed that the card uh, market would have evolved the way it has today. Um, so uh, for those of you who may not be aware that that's kind of where it is today, I wanted to kind of compare what it was like when I was a kid versus what it's like today. So. <clears throat> Back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, when everyone was collecting, it, it seemed like almost all of my friends had a collection of cards. Um, there, there were some things that didn't exist back then that exist today. 
Uh, one is serial number cards. Uh, serial number cards uh, add an, a degree of scarcity. Um, and those are the cards that, that investors and collectors really target um, because those are the cards that most likely will hold their value over time. So uh, that's a one big change that can kind of ensure that overprinting doesn't devalue uh, a, a key card, such as a Mike Trout rookie card uh, down the road. Um, one of the things that happened, as everyone knows, is that uh, with the overprinting of cards in the 80s and the 90s, it basically uh, made all the cards worthless. Uh, there was a lot of demand, and with that demand came a lot of supply. Well, at some point, the demand fell off, uh, and yet there were still a ton of cards on the market. So people who had invested in unopened boxes, in key uh, players that thinking that they're going to maybe eventually be uh, worth the price of a Mickey Mantle or a Honus Wagner, who knows, you know, 50 years from that point, uh, suddenly realized that their cards really weren't worth anything. And to be honest, those cards probably still aren't worth very much. Uh, uh, one of the things that has come into play now is grading. Uh, and grading simply means that uh, a third-party company actually looks at the condition of your card and they give it uh, a label 1 to 10. So 10 being the highest grade that you can get for a card. Um, that actually has played a, a role in the value of a card. And that's another thing that is quite a big change uh, from, you know, now to, to back then. <clears throat> so uh, those, are the, those are kind of the differences um, which has created this uh, sports cards market, which uh, has definitely evolved from what it was 30 years ago. Um, and it's it's uh, really truly a liquid market, which also it was was not the case 30 years ago. Um, there was no eBay, and uh, that's really uh, the place where people buy and sell. Uh, that's kind of the sports card uh, trading hub. Um, there are other places that you can buy and sell, but for the most part, if you want to uh, sell your card, you're going to sell it on eBay. So. That again, that didn't exist 30 years ago. What, what it was 30 years ago was if you had a collection of cards and you wanted to sell them, you would probably have to go to your local card shop and sell them at about half the value that they're going to sell them uh, for on, at the retail store. So you're essentially selling your cards wholesale so that a card shop owner could sell them retail. Now you can actually get what you would I would consider very close to retail price for uh, for your cards and again depending on the condition and the rarity of the card you might even be able to get more uh, there's a lot of negotiating um, it's a very uh, uncertain market right now for sure very volatile so um, you know it's it's actually a great place to be if you're uh, excited by that sort of thing um, so those are kind of the differences in uh, the sports card market between uh, what's going on today versus uh, back when I was a kid. And um, at this point, uh, I feel like this um, sports card market will continue to evolve and be a place where people can actually make money. Um, one of the places, one of the websites that's easiest to get started and easiest to uh, learn about the hobby and learn about how you can make money is a website called Starstock. And uh, I, I believe the website was set up kind of to kind of uh, emulate uh, a stock trading site. So uh, you can buy and sell, there's a market price um, and you can make an offer um, and you can build your collection that way and you never have to take possession of the card. So you can buy a card and sell it the same day and if you buy it for $5, sell it for 10, you made a $5 profit. So it's a pretty cool site. It's a pretty cool way to uh, make a little bit of money, and it's a pretty cool way to build a collection if you're a sports card collector. So um, that's all I wanted to say for my first video. Is um, I'm you know pretty excited to be back in the hobby. Uh, I never honestly thought I'd never be back collecting cards again. I thought it was something in the past, something that uh, I could just look back on my childhood and say, hey, well I, I did that one time. Um, but with all the buzz, there was no way that I could. I could stay away for, for much longer. Um, so 
hopefully you watch my future videos. Uh, I'm going to get into uh, specifically which cards are good buys right now. Um, maybe a little bit more as to what what's going on with the hobby. Um, what why people are even in this, why people are excited about it. Um, so there's definitely a lot to cover. I uh, appreciate you checking out my first video and uh, please uh, comment and, and like the video. Even if you didn't like it, click the like button anyway. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.